Hello everyone, and welcome to my General Hospital YouTube channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Blaze and Pristina met in a hospital. Blaze stated that she had not kept it a secret that she had agreed to be the new face of deception. Christina complimented Blaze on her promotion. Blaze stated that she was unsure whether she would fit in with what others thought hot, pretty, or trendy. Christina described Blaze as beautiful, hot, and trendy. Blaze stated that Natalia believed it was best for Blaze to keep her personal life quiet, and she inquired whether this would be an issue for Blaze and Christina. Christina told Blaze that she had no problem with it. Blaze grinned as she mentioned that Christina made her happy. Terry also wished Tracy a happy birthday when she was in the hospital. Terry informed Tracy that she noticed no cause for concern in Tracy's blood results. Tracy mentioned that she had been feeling a little lethargic in recent days and wondered if this was symptomatic of anything. Terry wondered if Tracy was depressed. Tracy stated that she was still suffering Luke's death in 2022. Terry addressed some of the family members Tracy had lost throughout the years, such as Edward, Leela, and Alan. A legend here at GH, Terry stated about Alan. Terry advised Tracy to become more active and pushed her to attempt sporty sports like tennis or golf. Tracy sneered, but promised to maintain an open mind. Later, Terry met with Laura and Alexis in his office to discuss a contract that would enroll city employees in the hospital's healthcare plan. Alexis thanked Laura with the initiative, which Terry welcomed. Laura stated that she believed city employees were entitled to the greatest healthcare available. Terry signed an agreement to support the initiative. Portia noticed in Heather's hospital room that she was no longer restrained after her surgery. After asking for a security and a nurse to place Heather in cuffs, Portia exited the room. Kevin then entered Heather's room. Heather told Kevin that she had done horrific things, and that it was as if her blood was on fire, and that the only way to extinguish it was to do something crazy. Heather's mood darkened as she realized she would have to return to prison shortly. Kevin encouraged Heather to envision a world in which she was a free woman, Heather stated that she would place flowers on Esm's grave until she realized Esm's body was not in the ground. Heather stated that she will deliver flowers to Sasha in remembrance of Heather's murder of Brando in 2022. Heather fantasized that Ryan had given her an estate in his will and she planned to use it to buy a little house with a yard for Ace to play in. Heather began to cry, questioning the point of torturing herself with unattainable tasks, Kevin left the room after telling Heather he'd be back. Kevin informed Portia at the nurse's station moments later that he had seen a striking change in Heather's conduct since her surgery. Portia remained unimpressed, and she delivered strong words to Kevin. You know, maybe you should try telling that to someone who didn't almost lose their daughter to that mad woman, Portia replied with a raspy voice. Kevin noticed Laura and Alexis after Portia had walked away, Kevin complimented Laura on her healthcare effort. Laura expressed a desire to visit Heather. After that, Kevin requested if he could speak with Alexis regarding a legal opinion. Kevin inquired about Heather's chances of being released. As Portia stood close, Alexis informed Kevin that there existed precedent and that Heather's case may be reopened. Portia was furious as she approached Kevin and Alexis. Please, 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 don't tell me that you're considering letting Heather Webber skate on multiple homicide charges, she said. Laura apologized for not visiting Heather more regularly. Laura appeared upbeat and delighted in Heather's company. She suspected Heather was upset over something. Heather claimed she couldn't stop thinking about the disaster that was her life. Laura clutched Heather's hand as she broke down in sobs. Laura quickly rejoined Kevin, Alexis, and Portia. Laura exclaimed that she had noticed a shift in Heather and asked Kevin for his thoughts on Heather's progress. Laura's conduct irritated Portia greatly. Do you want my thoughts on Heather Weber? Let me see. Laura, don't attempt to sell me on this poor, misunderstood Heather Weber. That woman is the murderer. She cheated everyone. Do you want to let her do it again? Portia asked incredulously. 
Portia looked at Laura, Kevin, and Alexis with incredulity. When Alexis started mentioning a possible legal reason for Heather's behavior, Portia quickly shut him down. No, no, no. I don't want to hear any of that, especially from you, Alexis, knowing you no longer practice law. And after this, I believe I understand why, Portia replied sternly. Portia paused before continuing. I don't care if Heather appears kind, changed, or victimized to you. How much time did you actually spend with her? How much time did you actually spend with that woman? Just a moment here and there. Why don't you try being me or a member of my staff who has had to deal with her insane behavior on a daily basis? And just so you know, this isn't even getting into the anguish it's caused my family and countless other families. So, you know what? You want to bring her case before a court and jury. I want you to do it because I'm going to resist it. I'll fight you with every breath in my body. Portia pledged to everyone present. Sasha informed Cody in the Quartermain Estate stables that Dante was being discharged from hospital. Cody and Sasha exchanged a joyful hug to celebrate the news. Sasha recalled that the previous summer, Dante assisted Cody in rescuing her from Fancliffe. Cody and Sasha expressed their appreciation for one another. Tracy entered the stables after Sasha had stepped out. Tracy recalled that she had once enjoyed horseback riding and begged Cody for assistance in finding a gentle horse. When Sasha returned shortly after, Tracy apologized for Sasha and Deception's failed relationship. Olivia entered after Tracy had departed. Olivia credited Sasha for making shepherd's pie for dinner. Cody complimented Sasha as Olivia departed to serve the food she had prepared. At the same time, Tracy noticed a brown bag containing a birthday cake in the Quartermain Mansion's kitchen. Tracy shouted, Oh, good lord, as she spotted the cake. The words birthday girl showed upside down on the screen. At Bobby's diner, Jocelyn introduced Felicia to a young girl called Hunter Cruz. According to Jocelyn, Hunter is the new manager of Bobby's. Felicia cordially introduced herself to Hunter. Moments afterward, Trina assisted in escorting Curtis into the diner. Curtis entered the diner with the use of a cane. Curtis was taken aback when everyone in the diner applauded him enthusiastically. As Trina and Curtis sat at a table, Felicia commended Curtis on his success. Trina stated that she was proud of Curtis. Jocelyn joined Trina to complain that PCU was bothering her about finding a new roommate. When Trina stated that she was unsure whether she ever wanted to return to PCU, Jocelyn understood. Curtis joked that Jocelyn was a real friend. Jocelyn noticed Dex as he entered the diner. Jocelyn approached and took Dex's order. Dex requested coffee and a grilled cheese sandwich. Jocelyn returned shortly later and removed a piece of paper off Dex's table. Jocelyn described Dex's desire to work for the PCPD as reckless and stupid. She reasoned that being a member of the PCPD would make Dex an even more attractive target for Sonny. Dex joked that not everyone could be a doctor. When Jocelyn scoffed, Dex inquired whether something was wrong. Jocelyn mentioned that she has been thinking about altering her career route from pre-med. She claimed that patients were not always wonderful people. Patients like Cyrus Renault. Dex inquired before Jocelyn rushed out. Jocelyn returned shortly after carrying Dex's order. Dex commented that the grilled cheese looked fantastic. Back at the table, Trina informed Curtis that she was not hungry. Trina revealed that she no longer frequented the diner after Spencer's death. Trina was concerned that she sounded ridiculous. Curtis responded that Trina just sounded like someone who had been heartbroken. I miss Spencer all the time, but it's especially bad at areas where we used to spend time together, like here. And it appears natural, like if in an instant, literally in a split second, I'll forget, the door will open, and I'll look up, expecting him to be there. And then he's not, Trina wailed. Curtis remembered having to learn to walk again. He explained that shattered hearts, like broken bones, recover on their own. Trina expressed her want to believe Curtis' statement that Trina will love and be loved again. Because there's no one on this planet more deserving of love than you, Curtis affectionately told Trina. 
Trina soon escorted Curtis out of the diner. Thanks for watching if you like this video, so please don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't miss any update.